to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you could join us today. In this episode, Pastor Jeremy is teaching on how to win the fight of faith. We believe this message is going to strengthen, encourage you, and can change your life forever. Let's head in there right now. There's a lot of people that pray for me, would you pray? I need prayers right now, I need prayers. No, what you need to do is you need to rebuke. If there's a demon that's hounding you, a sin keeps showing up in your life over and over, you need to speak to that thing. And until that thing hears your voice, it's going to stay in your life. Now, you can get a reprieve for a little bit. God will allow this, especially when you're a new believer. If you come to a church like this, and just like we offered Sunday, you need to come forward. We'll pray for you. And I'm not saying everyone that came forward is a new believer. Listen to me throughout the whole statement here. God will allow you on someone else's faith to get a reprieve many times so you can build your faith and fight. But there is no voice more effective and more important in the battle than your own. There is no voice more effective at removing the mountain of whatever it is, sickness, disease, depression, hurt feelings. I mean, we can just list it. Whatever it is, it needs to hear your voice. And until it hears your voice, it'll just keep standing right there. But we have got to win. Folks, time is short. And there comes a time if you're really going to pick up the W, you're going to have to go all in. Look at your neighbor and say all in. in. Here's an example. Every day, if if you're in a fight for your life, what that means is the doctor has said, I've given up hope, you're going to die. Hopefully you're not under that diagnosis. But if you are under that diagnosis, I've got good news for you. You don't have to die. I've got good news for you. Well, you think you know more than the doctor? I know what the Bible says. So here's an example of going all in. Every day, get on your knees in your house. Bow before the Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands and start worshiping the Lord and say, Lord, I honor you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. Oh, I thank you. You're the healer, Lord Jesus. You are the great physician. I thank you, Jesus, that you took sickness on your body. And by those stripes, on the authority of the blood and the word, Lord, I thank you. I'm healed. I'm whole. Be magnified in my life, Lord Jesus. Oh, I honor the name of Jesus. Spend some time doing that, see. I'm talking about going all in and winning. Now, if you don't take time, get on your knees and do this. You can't really say you're all in. You really can't. You say, well, my problem is a bad knee, so I can't get on my knees. Did you know you can stand up and the the Lord will be honored? You can stand up and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you right now. You're the healer. Pain, get out of that left knee, whatever it is, you know, that's hurting you. Now, I'm I'm showing you how to win the fight of faith. Because remember, the fight is for what Jesus purchased for you. We should not settle to live in the land of sickness. If you're dealing with some malady, whether it's head issue, throat issue, back issue, knees already mentioned, hip issues, when's the last time your hip heard your voice speak to it? When's the last time your ankle heard your voice speak to it? When's the last time? Now, see, I'm I'm telling you, I know up front when I talk like this, people are like, this is nuts. Well, to me, what's nuts is that Jesus paid such a gruesome price. He went all in, and we'll go halfway in to try to receive what he he did. I'm talking about going all in. Now, the longer you worship the Lord day after day, the more favor you're going to walk in with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you this. Praise is the way to victory. Those that walk in victory, don't let the devil steal their praise. Certainly not over hurt feelings. Certainly not. No. Let me show you why I say that. Psalms 8, verse 1. Say it again. Thank God for the word. To the chief musician on the instrument of Gath. thought that was interesting. A psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Who have set your glory above the heavens. I tell you what, if it's a clear night tonight, you ought to just step outside, especially if you live right outside of town. If you live in town, just forget it. But if you live outside of town, you look up, and I mean, you just see the heavens for a moment. 
It'll make you want to praise God. But you know, many people are too busy to even do that. They don't think like that. I got stuff I got to do. I know you need to praise God, though. Because, see, I'm talking about winning. I'm not talking about just getting along in life and just barely making it. God doesn't want you to live on barely get along street. He doesn't. He wants you prospering and overflowing. That's why I took so much of my preaching time preaching about prosperity tonight. <laughs> Somebody I saw, it was pretty neat. Uh, I had to make a quick trip down South Texas uh, earlier this week. And uh, wouldn't you know it, <clears throat> when we flew into Austin, Texas, Garrett was with me. Uh, there were a couple of other missionary guys that had their missionaries here in America. They travel all over and do these missions. And so, as it was, for some reason, there was this huge delay in getting our suitcases. And so, me and this one guy, we just got to talking and talking. And would you know, he poked me two or three times. I started preaching right there in the airport. Right in the middle of Austin and Gomorrah, I'm preaching. I don't care how many limp wrists that walk by me, I'm preaching. Jesus is coming. And this is what I was saying. We're running out of time. It's like time's in a funnel and skin. And I mean, that guy was just all, he was just like, man, this is interesting. He had a phone call he had to take. He said, hang on. And he's like, I, I got to go. I said, nah, I, you probably don't have time. You got me preaching. That's what preachers do. He said, no, no, I want to hear more. And I said, see, that's how God works. He'll have you cross paths with somebody. I mean, what am I doing in Austin anyway? You know what I mean? Well, I can tell you what I was doing there, but... Here I am. I hadn't ever flown into Austin and exited the plane there. And here I'm now. I'm next to these guys. Not only on the plane were they across from us, but then when I got down waiting on the luggage, here he is standing right there beside me. So we had a preach fest right there. I like that. And that's what it ought to be. What? Where the name of the Lord is excellent, and he should be glorified. You should talk about it sometime. Yeah, but, I mean, that's not the place where suitcases are coming out. That might be the very place. I just happened to notice several people stopped and were looking back at us because I've been told my voice carries. My mom told me that growing up, and then my wife told me that just last night. <laughs> Laying in bed, she's like, I, they heard you down the hallway. I was like, I was barely talking. She said, your voice carries. I said, I've heard that before. <laughs> I've heard that a lot in my lifetime. But aren't you glad my voice carries? Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, it ought to be something. What, what was that? Carries the word of the Lord. That's right. It ought to carry praise to the Lord. He gave you a voice to praise him. Now, i got to move here. Verse 2. I'm going too slow. Psalm 8. Now, tell me, move, Pastor. That's why I need to move, Pastor. you got to go. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you've ordained strength. Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Come on now. This is one of Larry's favorite verses. I know it is. He's talked to me about it before. One night he was cracking my back. I was having some back pain. He's like, hang on. And he's like, I love that verse about the avenger stopped with praise. I said, hallelujah. Yes, Larry, me too. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. He tells me, tell me if that's too much pain. Too much. I'm tapped out. <laughs> look, at this, look at this verse right here. You have ordained strength. If you go look that word up, you know what that word means? Praise. That's what it means. He's ordained praise. That means God's behind it when you say, you know what? I'm going to just stop what I'm doing right now and start praising the Lord. I can tell you right now. If you're at it with your wife and you're in strife, just stop, back up, get alone for a minute. Say, Lord, I just praise you and thank you for my wife. Uh, you're going to harpoon the strife. But if you don't, you know, I'm going to tell her what's up. <laughs> Notice you ain't praising God. You're proving your point, aren't you? But you're not praising. And you know what you're doing? You're reducing your strength when you get in strife. But when you praise, strength and praise are just like, I mean, it's twins, you could say. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, 
hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. The enemy is counting on you to allow something to steal your praise. Because if you allow something to steal your praise, then he can get active. But when you get your praise on, and you don't care who's watching you, and you don't care who's pointing and laughing, and you don't care who's saying what, you're going to praise the Lord anyway. The enemy goes to sleep. I like it. Yeah. Now those that win the fight of faith learn to praise through the pain. Those that win the fight of faith learn to praise through adversity. Those that win the fight of faith, they learn to praise through hurt feelings and anything else that comes your way. You've learned to praise no matter what. No matter what. You don't let anything stop you of your praise. Well, <clears throat> low on time. But I'm going to bring up something else that causes you to walk in victory. You want to hear it? Yes. This is one of those series that could literally tweak and change your whole life. It really could. Because if you'll praise God, you put the enemy to sleep. You ever seen those NBA players that are rocking the baby? Shoot. Praising God. Rock the baby. You might as well just go ahead and learn to do that. Some of you ain't even seen that before. It's all right. Rock, they, they rock the baby when they make a three. That's, you know, ice in the veins, what other ones do? That's stupid. They do. The other ones are rocking the baby. Rocking the baby? I'm praising God. Glory to God, I've got the victory. The enemy might as well shut up. Go into repose, would you? <laughs> well, another thing that will bring victory is to declare a fast. See, I let January pass. Is everybody, well, are we going to do a January fast? Nope. Well, February, I know, but right in the middle of February, we had the sweetheart banquet where we're feeding you food. Can't really declare a fast as a pastor when we're going to feed you a feast, right? So now here we are in March, and I've been meaning to bring this up. You need to know fasting does not move God. Write it down. Fasting does not move God. Faith moves God. Praise moves God, right? Fasting, though, puts your flesh under subjection to your spirit. You need to know this. It allows your spirit to be more in control than it was before. So fasting has an effect on you, not God's end of things. And if you approach this different, oh, I need God to move. I need God to move. I'm going to declare a fast. You see, you're thinking of this wrong. You've got to understand it's about getting your flesh under subjection to what? Your spirit. And your flesh is what will, like right in the middle of prayer, I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. See, your spirit, man, will wake you up in the middle of the night to seek the Lord. And what you'll do is you'll go to the fridge. That's what happens. I'm hungry. Well, it's 2.30 in the morning. Why would you eat at 2.30 in the morning? Your spirit never sleeps. So you ought to at least stop. Ain't nothing wrong with making your PB&J at 2.30. Okay, I'm not mad at you. But look. <laughs> look. Why don't you at least stop and ask the Lord? Lord, is this you waking me up? Now, the Lord has used my dogs, my children, my wife, my cell phone. Bzz, wake me up early, early, especially Sunday morning. I got a pastor friend in Tennessee. William Luffman's his name. He loves to text. And I told him this last time I saw him. I said, I like to race you to try to get up earlier than you on Sunday morning, but it's hard. He said, yeah, I'm up at 4. I said, Psh. Well, my daddy's up at 3.30. <laughs> but he don't send me a text at 3.30. But Pastor Loveman does at 4. You and your family have been prayed for. You'll preach the word today. Praise the Lord. Well, I wake up, I'm like, yep, yeah, beat me up again. He's up early. Well, we're talking about winning. How many want to win? 
If you're having trouble with the flesh, fast some food. If you're having trouble with your soul, fast television or social media. You got to stop thinking of fasting as food only, though. You got to get that off your brain. Remember, Jesus fasted. That's one reason we should fast, because we're following the king. He fasted, and he was tempted during this time and overcame the devil because he had power when he fasted. That's found in Matthew 4. You ought to read the whole story sometime. But you can find several places in the book of Acts. We're going to show you one of them in chapter 13 and verse 2, where the early church fasted. They did this quite often, and they had the power of God show up. In fact, look at this in Acts 13, 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said. Now again, see, you might say, well, that contradicts what you're saying about it made God move. No, 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 listen. It got their flesh under subjection to their spirit. The number one way the Holy Spirit's going to say something to you is going to be to your spirit. But if it's clogged up because you've been feeding the flesh all day, every day for the last, well, let's be honest, 20 years. No wonder you can't catch the leading of the Holy Spirit, which, by the way, is another way to win. I'm going to talk about that Sunday, the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the following and leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said after they fasted, separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Now, most people wait for a hurt feeling before now they're in tune with the Holy Spirit. They didn't fast. If you notice that, that's how Americans are. As soon as their feelings are hurt, now they're like, oh, it's time for me to go. Well, hell no, that's, that's not really the way this works. You fast, you pray, you're playing on where God calls you. And if you're like that, then the Holy Spirit's going to speak to those that are leaders. This is the way the Holy Spirit works. And this always rakes rebels wrong. <laughs> it always does. But hey, I didn't set up the system of the kingdom of God in the church. Jesus did. I've just got to be faithful to the post he's called me to. And you do too. And so that's what I, you found a church like that. That's it. And no, 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 no. Hey, just to clear everything up so everybody knows, this is no cult. You can leave anytime you want. In fact, I've encouraged you to leave before. In fact, I've had concerned members come and say, why do you tell people to go and there's the door and leave? I said, well, but God, give them the boot. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Woo! I ain't giving nobody the boot yet. But, but my point is, this is come as you want, leave as you want. What in the world are you thinking? Well, it seems like a cult. It's just called divine order. They ministered to the Lord. They fasted. The Holy Spirit spoke. It said, separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I called them. It's like this. Fasting clears your ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. The very first time we came uh, to check out Accelerate, um, I believe my husband came with me that very first time. Um, and I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that's what I knew that that's where I was called. Um, so me and the kids continue to come back um, every Sunday and every Wednesday. I remember women were thinking that I was a single mom because my husband wasn't there. but. I remained faithful and I kept coming. I would say at that point, our marriage was rocky. Um, I know that had we not stopped or started coming to church, I wouldn't be married today. That was something that I didn't ask him and wake him up every morning and say, you coming this time? Or, you know, Wednesday, you coming today? I just kept coming and I'd say, hey, we're going to church, see you later. And like I said, I remained faithful. I prayed for him. And it was like this one empty seat, like one day he's going to fill this seat. <laughs> so that morning was just like our normal chaotic Sunday morning, getting ready to go. Um, I was in the kitchen, you know, getting the kids breakfast and stuff ready and walked back into my room where my husband was normally still asleep. And he was up putting on a button up shirt. And I remember him just Sorry. <laughs> I remember him buttoning his shirt up that morning and I knew he wasn't going to the gym because he was wearing a button-up shirt. So I was like, well, where are you going? And he said, I'm coming with you to church. So I said, okay. And then I walked out, I was like, praise the Lord, he's coming. <laughs> you know, after my husband came to church with me um, after those months, I was, I think we were at home after church and I said, well, what? 
caused you to come like with us to church? And he said, honestly, I've seen a change in you and I wanted what you have. I would say right around that time, um, I thought my marriage was over. And that statement alone was confirmation that it's not. And for him to see that change in me because I kept showing up, now he keeps showing up and my kids keep showing up. And now we have his little brother. I would say like my personal little motto for anything is keep showing up. And I continually showed up. I didn't care that people thought I was a single mom or that I didn't have a husband at home. But one thing I would not do, Um, don't nag them, just pray for them and they'll show up. And that's, that's another thing too, it, you showing up and being faithful is going to change the trajectory of everyone behind you and everyone after you because one little thing that I had in my mind to remain determined and to keep showing up, it changed my family. It brought me and my husband closer together. It has really strengthened our family. Like I said, we have custody of his little brother now. So now we're changing his trajectory and those after him. We have custody of my stepdaughter. We're changing the trajectory of her life. So you remaining faithful and diligent is gonna affect more than just you. A fleshy, carnal Christian just can't discern the voice of the Spirit of God like one that lives a fasted lifestyle. There came a time, and I want to look at this story before we go tonight. I sure don't want to bore you, but y'all want to look at one more scripture here? It's already 8 o'clock for those at 8.01. See, time's just ticking. We'll be out of here. I <laughs> go till 10. <laughs> I can't do it. It's a school night, sir. <laughs> I love you. One day, the disciples found themselves in a predicament. They couldn't cast out a demon. I want you to go to Matthew 17. Let's look at this for a minute. Matthew 17 and verse number 14. It says, And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to Jesus, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. See, that's a demon. Look at your neighbor and say, that's a demon. Now, you're not calling your neighbor a demon. I'm talking about what we read. It's happening to that son of this boy. That's a demon. You got to, don't call your neighbor a demon. That's not what I said. You got to listen. <laughs> so, this man says, I brought them, verse 16, Matthew 17. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Now look at Jesus' response. Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Talking to his disciples. So right off the bat, he lets you know they had a faith issue right here. You know why? Because when that demon first met resistance, nothing changed, and they started going by what they saw instead of what they knew. Jesus gave us authority. Uh-oh, it's not working. They back off, faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. Now, this just stuck out to me. Exactly what he did several chapters earlier to the fever and Simon's mother-in-law, he did to this demon. Isn't that something? See, you're gonna, I, not all sickness is a demon, but you've got to treat sickness like a demon. If a demon walked into your room, let me just help you with this. God forbid this ever happens, but there are some in our fellowship that have seen this even this year. A demon walks into the room. You know what you do? You rebuke it in Jesus' name. You don't get under the covers and let your knees knock and get scared. It's a low-level devil that can manifest like that. This ain't one of the high principalities and powers up high. you got to understand that. It's one of these low-level devils, and they don't like it when they're rebuked. They'll come, and they want you to get in fear, because if you get in fear, then you're like, Oh my, what's happening? And freak out. And then they get to camp out there. Most of the time, you won't see them. I think it was Brother Summerall, I heard say this on a recording years ago. If you could see into the Spirit, it would freak you out. 
<clears throat> the warfare going on and the demon activity and everything else. Well, what do you do if a demon You rebuke it. You do what your master did. He rebuked the demon and it came out of him. It's like that fever left, the demon left. It's all from the same place. Hell, are you catching that? And the child was cured from that very hour. Somebody say, glory to God. Glory to God. <clears throat> now, the disciples are like, wait a minute, why did this happen? Verse 19, they come to Jesus privately. They said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus bluntly tells, you better be ready if you ask Jesus a question. He says, because of your unbelief. Now, unbelief is not disbelief, it's believing the wrong thing. Because of your unbelief, for as surely I say to you, look what he says immediately. If you have faith as a mustard seed, so many people focus on the mustard seed and miss the entire point here. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing shall be impossible to you. What does this mean? If you by faith rebuke something, it will move. So if you just lift up your voice and rebuke something and nothing changes, there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. Now, you don't need to go and try to investigate all your whole life what that reason is. At some, sometimes in your life, you've got to stop trying to figure everything out. You've got to say, now, wait a minute, on the authority of the Word. I'm talking about being all in and winning the fight of faith. Don't, don't forget where we're going with this message here tonight. Jesus said, it's your unbelief. He said, however... If you have faith as a mustard seed, so you've got to plant it. You've got to speak to the mountain. See, a mustard seed is small, but out of that comes a harvest. When you speak to the mountain, out of that comes the harvest of it moving, if you spoke by faith. So what does that mean? That means you can't just speak whatever comes into your mind and practice that every day of your life and then just flip around, all of a sudden I'm going to speak faith and see mountains move. It doesn't work. That's why so many people don't win the fight of faith right there. But if you... If you would be more careful with your words, you would end up finding yourself more effective in your faith walk. Well, unfortunately, we do have to stop right there. We are out of time today. However, if you would like to hear more from this series on how to win the fight of faith, you can head over to our website at accelerate.church.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find this message in its entirety, plus so many more that you can listen to throughout your week. But if you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Or you can write us, email us, we would love to hear from you. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.